everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 9th and the 16th of June 2018. So before we go down into the days and speak a little bit of on each day in particular over the next week, I want you to understand what kind of atmosphere we are entering in the sky as summer progresses. Um, many astrologers call it an electric summer or uh, there's a feeling of hectic energy in the sky. There's a feeling, you see Georgia here? <laughs> there's a feeling uh, uh, of being unsure. That there's a turbulence that is unsettling. Mars is going to go retrograde, turn retrograde very soon in Aquarius. And it's going to go on for a while. And Basically, we are entering a time that is critical for communication, a time in which a lot of new information can come in, a lot of understandings and epiphanies can appear, and, and there's a lot of learning involved. And all our words, all our navigation forward, all our ideas, all our... Um, concepts are being judged. We're having a new moon this week, a new moon in Gemini, and that new moon is squaring Chiron and Hygieia, who are conjunct. Hygieia is the goddess of hygiene and medicine, and Chiron is the wounded healer. We'll talk about that. And Neptune, squaring Neptune as well. And sextiling a couple of planets that we'll talk about a little later. Let's talk about these squares before. First of all, remember that in every new lunar cycle, it's important to keep ourselves calm, composed, clean, positive around the new moon. As this energy is imprinted and goes on with you for the next lunar cycle of 29 and a half days. This moon is in Gemini, so as I said, it's all about our communication, our interaction with our surroundings, the part we take in our close surroundings, between our brothers and sisters, between our peers, within our neighborhood, within our larger family circles. And our, our ideas, concepts, and words that guide us forth, the commerce we do with the environment is on the table and of course learning and ideas um, there's a lot of cerebral energy but the square to Neptune is disillusioning it's not only disillusioning it's disheartening it gives us a sense truthfully that logic isn't everything that emotion spirituality intuition do play a part but it is challenging for us because of the square. This is a time that we could feel that decision making is much harder for us, that communication lines are frozen in a sense and things are not coming through. And again, this is a dissonance from that new moon in Gemini talking about new information coming in. But remember we're talking about a lunar cycle this is a wave building up and it emanates and starts by the feeling that we need to communicate, we need to open up, we need to get more information because of that freeze, because of that harshness, because of that hardness, because of our, that secludedness. I, I uh, thought about a few days ago that I want to um, give you a link for... Uh, song a different song every week and this time i thought i want to give you everybody knows by leonard cohen and mr cohen says there 
everybody's got this broken feeling like their father or their dog just died. Everybody knows the fight was fixed. The poor stayed poor, the rich got rich. And, and everybody knows the good guys lost. And all of that feeling, all of that broken feeling is something that we can feel now especially when we have a dramatic conjunction in the sky between Chiron, the wounded healer, and Hygieia, the goddess of hygiene and medicine. We could feel the wound much more strongly. But again, that is a stage. It's not static. Putting that energy on top of things so we could feel it will produce another wave that would like to heal it, that would like to change it, that would like to create something more hygienic and healthier. And as I said, that new moon is squaring that, so that's the challenge for us. Healing that place within us, it's an Aries, so that place within us is the challenge, within our own initiative, within our independence. We could feel or understand that a lot of our independence has been robbed from us, so, so to speak. Whether it is in our close circles or in the vaster, broader terms. And we would like to gain that independence, that sense of self-sustainability. That's already Taurus, but again, talking about Aries energy. That we need, and that we can do it. We just have to be careful, because at this time, Communication, as we said, could be feisty, could be judgmental, could be harsh, and things don't follow through along the lines of communication as clearly as you would like them to be. So we would have to be very exact, very modest, and very sensitive about whether our things are going to actually heal something or create a greater wound. But that new moon doesn't only square these planets. It sextiles on both ends, creating a triangle. One hand, Ceres, or Demeter, the goddess of uh, wheat and nature and plenty. And Gaia, for that sense. And on the other hand, we're having Aries, the goddess of mischief, conjunct uh, uh, Juno the goddess of hearth and family and everything we're loyal to, Hera, the wife of Zeus. They're conjunct on the one hand, we're going to talk about that in a second, and, and, and uh, Sirius on the other hand, and they're sextiling that new moon. So the connection, the beautiful connection to Demeter, to Sirius, is about giving to this world out of love. It's about giving to others, it's about believing in community. And the conjunction of uh, Aries and Juno, on the other hand, is about not apologizing for being loyal to the things we believe in. Not only not apologizing, but putting things on the table in an undiplomatic manner that could create fights, mischief, havoc. And that's the danger of this time, because rhetoric-wise, this isn't an easy time, and we can experience, whether from emanating from ourselves or from people around us, rhetoric that is hard to deal with, that can cause greater bangs and, 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 and uh, fireworks than it can actually transform this into a blooming garden. And that's what we have to watch out for. Definitely a beautiful conjunction that Aries Juno, fighting for what you're loyal to, um, not apologizing for it anymore. So, let's go down to the weekdays. So we'll give you a few pointers for the weeks themselves, for the days themselves. Saturday, the ninth, um, we're having the sun sextiling the moon in the morning. Beautiful morning. Of course, the times I'm giving are in Central European time. If you're living in the United States, take it about nine hours before. If you're living in the Pacific in Australia, take it about nine hours ahead. So Saturday morning, beautiful sextile in the sky. 
noontime is already more uh, sensitive as the moon squares Pluto. Um, try not to be too dramatic. Try not to be um, too intense. The evening, however, is great for having people. It's uh, great for um, being with people. Sextile to Mercury, just don't take it too late as there's a square to Venus. No when to stop it. Sunday the 10th, Taurus Moon conjunct Uranus in the, in the morning gives it a special flavor that we could really enjoy ourselves in new ways and unfamiliar um, and, 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 uh, and exciting ways. We have to be careful not to be too fast for our own good and not to be stubborn or I would say not have patience for other people or for their ideas and concepts around us. Uh, the moon is trining Saturn on Sunday. That's a good day to take serious things forward, strategic things forward. If you're working on Sunday, that's wonderful. But it does square Mars as well a little later, so please watch out from aggression. Um, Monday, the 11th, Taurus moon opposes Jupiter. The opposition to Jupiter and that Taurus moon gives it... Um, well, a, a warning sign, not to be too indulgent, not to be too concentrated on my pleasures and my sensuality, not to take it too far ahead and do it too big, and, and really remain composed and, and discreet and uh, have humility. Don't be too direct either. Um, there's a sextile to Neptune on that Monday as well and a trine to Pluto. It's a great day to look inside. It's a great day to find your inner strength. It's a great day to participate in anything spiritual or creative, artistic. Tuesday the 12th we have the Gemini moon sextiling Venus. And it's a good day to, to be around people. Mercury enters Cancer on that day so our navigation forward and our Decision making become more childlike, more emotional, and a little slower. Um, the moon is trining Mars at night, so Tuesday night, very energetic, good night to go out. Um, Wednesday, the 13th, Mercury is sexta. Well, you, wait a minute. Wednesday is when everything that I was talking about in the beginning of the video happens. We're having this new moon, squaring these planets, sextiling the others. So you know Wednesday. On Thursday the 14th we're having the moon at perigee. That means the moon is closest to Earth. So emotions are heightened. The highs and lows of the tide are heightened. And anything within us is bubbling more. So just, you know, it's, it's neither good or bad. Just watch it. Enjoy it, you know. It's, it's a great time to be with people you're really close to, like family members or people you feel very familiar and intimate with. Um, Yes, Georgie, I do feel intimate with you. No, I didn't mean it that way. Um, so, the moon is at perigee. Venus, the planet of love, relationships, our self-esteem, is entering Leo. I love it when Venus is in Leo because that means she finally has the courage and the heart to want to get up on stage and dance like no one is looking. But you know what? Someone is looking and he's enjoying seeing Venus. And she knows that he's enjoying seeing her. And that's part of her enjoyment as well. So basically that's a time that we can indulge in our sensuality. That we can indulge in satisfaction. That we want to play with life and love and harmony and beauty. We just have to be careful not to be too hedonistic, not to be too self-concentrated, not to be egocentric, and not to be too theatrical. I don't want Venus dancing like she knows I'm watching. I want her to dance with her eyes closed and see something in internal happening there. I want that to be honest. When it becomes too theatrical, it loses its, uh, its authenticity. But for the next couple of weeks, we can all enjoy that, Venus in Leo. Yes, Georgia, you too. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, the Cancer Moon is going to conjunct Mercury and sextile Uranus at 
on Thursday. Great day for communication and emotional communication uh, at that sense. Good day to be with groups and friends. It is opposing Saturn later that night and that means you should be careful not to yes be too judgmental right or too stuck up or uh, just um, too old for your own good <clears throat> and if you feel a little um, you're right insecure yes I'm telling them about the insecurity uh, Georgia I know you're insecure so you could feel a little insecure on uh, on that Thursday night as well. Um, what do you mean you feel insecure all the time? Ah, because I don't pet you enough. That, that's, a, that's, that's emotional extortion, what you're doing now. Silence. Anyway, Friday the 15th, Venus squares your end. That means that in relationship, and we've been feeling it for the last couple of weeks, wow, things are going over relationships uh, lately. Yeah, you broke up with somebody? Anyway, Venus squares Uranus and on uh, Friday the 15th. That means we could be looking outside our relationship for something new. We could be wanting innovation and an upgrade. And we could be changing our status, you know. Uh, I'm not changing my status. Um, no, we can't be together, Georgia. You're a cat. I'm a human. And I'm married, for God's sake. Would you stop that? What do you mean you would never give up? That, that's sad. You know, you should be your own person. Okay. Enough, Georgia. Talk. Go outside. Okay. I wonder what Floyd would say about all my babbling. Um, when Venus squares Uranus, we could be looking outside. We could be looking for innovation and an upgrade. We could be impatient with our own relationships if we have one. So that doesn't mean you have to break up. It means that there's some kind of upgrade and innovation that needs to take place. And if both partners can, are willing to do it, to go the extra mile, then something wonderful can happen within the relationship that will bring back a lot of the excitement and the, the spark where it was lost <clears throat> but uh, you know if you're if you're not in a relationship you could find somebody not necessarily long-term somebody but just an exciting somebody and you have to be careful not to uh, lose your relationship at this time and to be patient with your relationship at this time the cancer moon is in a grand trine that Friday with Jupiter and Neptune very beautiful energy. We could really enjoy ourselves uh, that Friday. Very creative, artistic, and spiritual energy as well. Go outside, enjoy nature. Be it at the sea, be at the mountains, at the forest. And go to a concert. It is uh, opposing Pluto in the evening, so just don't be too dramatic, don't be too intense. A great evening, excuse me, for sex. Saturday, the 16th, Mercury opposes Saturn. That's the height of the harsh communication that I've been talking about, the freeze in communication that I've been talking about in the beginning of the video. On Saturday, the 16th, the Leo moon is go also going to square Uranus. And, um, yeah, and going to conjunct Venus a little later on the North Node. So, what do we have to say about Saturday? It's a day that we could enjoy ourselves with people. It's a day that we could uh, and have heightened satisfaction and heightened intuition. But we have to be careful not to be cold and judgmental and not to be too different, not to be too rebellious for the sake of rebellion alone. Really don't try to jump ahead or jump out of the crowd too much because that's not beneficial on that day so i think that's everything i had to say i want to thank you for liking sharing commenting it exposes these videos to more people and of course uh, for private lessons private consultations and group studies just contact me whenever you want or questions you have about astrology i'm always here 
and I'm wishing you a wonderful, wonderful um, weekend and week. Here's Leonard Cohen, the first comment below. Enjoy it. This is Boaz Fire. Goodbye.